So it, it really depends on what's in your heart and what you think the biggest problems in your area is. But the, the worst thing to do is just kind of sit around and fumble your thumbs and act like, well, that really can't affect change, so I won't try. Well, you know, you, you said it uh, best, Jason, and, you know, that was a great thing about your show. You know how to break it down because, I mean, you are the story of an activist, you know. So the way you break it down is, like, pretty much, I mean, it's pretty simple. And I see we have more callers who would like to ask you questions. Was there anything else you wanted to say, Henry? Um, no, just thank you, Jason, man. Very good movies. You're very easy to um, talk to, like, as in uh, tell the next generation about. I mean, we talk about the in the Fed with, uh, with the baby boomers and... When you're talking to retired military, especially like on the street, I usually like, especially I like um, letting them talk about their own experiences. They love to brag about, like I have friends who are ex-snipers and they've been to Katrina's and they admit that it was martial law. And I act dumb. I know everything about it, but I act dumb and they, they love to brag, man. I just say that I've been around the world and ex-military, uh, United States and Europeans, independent contractors, they'll tell you like, They'll show you, you know, they're, of course, Masons, and they'll show you their Illuminati uh, trophies and stuff. So, um, yeah, man, you're right. Just make a change. you got to just talk to one person at a time, you know, and figure out what gets them. You know, now it's like he's a body scanner issue because here in San Antonio, um, they're barely putting one in. Next week they're going to install the second one. So that's where I plan to be uh, soon, um, you know, handing out flyers and letting people know that, you know, obviously well, yeah. it's an invasion of privacy, and uh, we're not just stand for that, so. Thanks again, Jason. Good guys. Uh, good show. Uh, hit y'all guys up later. Thank you for the call, Henry. Thanks for the call, Henry. And Henry brought up a good point. Uh, next week is a national opt-out day, um, uh, ro uh, nationwide uh, protest. You can find it on uh, just Google uh, national opt-out day, TSA uh, body scanners. So, I mean, it is something that people can rally around. So our next caller I see here is George from Texas. George, you're on the air with Truth Exposed Radio with our guest, Jason Burmis of Loose Change fame, Fabled Enemies fame, uh, uh, Invisible Empire fame, the Info Warrior fame. Go ahead with your question, George. Well, I just want to make a comment. You know, back uh, when 9-11 happened, I was on the side of, you know, anti-Muslim, got to go after those people in caves and all that stuff. And I received um, the, the movie uh, Loose Change, and uh, I laughed at it. I said, how could you and all that stuff. But then again, when I looked at Flight 93, and I said, Where's this big plane? I said, it's, it's nowhere to be found and all that stuff. And then I started asking questions. And, you know, here's the thing is about, uh, about Jason Burmis, Alex, and a lot of other people in the Patriot movement. You know, I was one of those people, you know, you couldn't tell me otherwise, but you planted the seed. And, uh, and after a while, that seed sprouted, and I started to ask questions. And now, um, you know, now I'm like last uh, Halloween. I, I even passed out Jason's movie, Alex's movie, uh, Fall of the Republic and Terror Storm. Nice. Uh, to uh, when I gave kids candy, I gave parents DVDs. So I nice. So, you know, I would say that, y exactly, uh, DVDs are some of the best seeds for information because, you know, you hand someone a DVD, and if they even don't even watch it for two, three months, they get around to watching that. That's when the information comes in, and, you know, it may not hit them all at once, but it starts to settle in. I know I've watched certain movies um, like two, three times, and the more I watch them, the more I realize I pick up on new information I didn't pick up on the first time. So, you know, George, that's just a great point to bring up. That's cool that you were out there passing out DVDs for Halloween. Yeah, it's just, uh, I, but I always say, I was one of those people that, you know, you couldn't tell me otherwise. It was Muslims. It was Muslims. But, you know, but over time, you know, those, you, those seeds were watered by, by the events. And, you know, the thing is, even right now, convincing people, sometimes you can't convince people, but yet sooner or later they come back around. You just move on to the next person. You know. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, I, I did that in the very beginning before Lose Change. And let me tell you, a lot of people were really, really stubborn. I lost friends, family members didn't want to talk to me. They thought I was going insane. Uh, a few people actually looked at the information. Some of my closer friends, uh, uh, you know, my buddy James, my buddy Nate at the time, uh, they really, they were behind me 100%, and they were just like, you know, we got to do something about this. Hopefully someone's going to be able to do something about this. But I'll tell you what, a year, two years later, when I started getting involved in Loose Change and we finished the second edition, 95% of the family members and friends came right back around. There was still about 5 or 10% that really cold-shouldered me 
And uh, but they still, you know, they still over the years have come up to me, and they definitely talk a little different. And people realize that. Look, if you look at the evidence, you can't ignore it. And like you just said, there is not a large airliner in an open field, folks, in an open field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. There's not a fuselage. There's not wing debris. There's not a tail section. Exactly. It's non-existent. Exactly. And uh, George, you know, thank you for your call. Thank you for your questions. We're going to continue talking to Jason Burmis after this this uh, break, and we'll come back with more of your guys' questions. I know we have more callers in the wings that want to te- talk to Jason. Yeah, and so we definitely invite you to call. The call-in number is 512-646-1984. This is the Truth Exposed radio show. We have Jason Burmis on the air, truthexposedradio.com, willoflawradio.com, and stay tuned. We'll be right back. tuned to the Truth Exposed radio show. I am Matthew Medina. And this is Cody Hess. Our guest is Jason Burmis of Loose Change, Fabled Enemies, Invisible Empire, InfoWars, uh, the InfoWarriors show fame. And for those of you that don't know, back in the day, he made the rounds in the mainstream media promoting the Loose Change movie. And right here we have a news clip, an actual in-studio news video that we're going to play for you of witnesses accounts of bombs going off in the building. I would just like to go to the official version. They're saying that the, the intense heat from the impact holes was so intense that it weakened the steel, causing it to do a pancake collapse on top of itself. This is simply a lie. We know two minutes before the first building, which was struck second and burned for less time, we had firefighters in the impact zone saying that they could knock down the fires with two lines, two hand lines. Now, I ask you, can human beings stand in 1,500 degree temperature? 1200 degree temperature, 600 degree temperature. The answer is no, they cannot. Jason, I think it's it's telling that every time you disagree with something, you call the people a liar. I'm not calling anybody a liar, sir. I'm calling you a liar because you are a liar. Uh, these people were not lying. They knew they could knock down this fire. They radioed down. They said they could knock it down with two hand lines. And literally less than two minutes later, the building imploded on itself. And what you won't see in the clip there, but you can see at seamanschange.com again for free. Are the isolated- that is Jason Burmis debating popular mechanics right there, live on a mainstream network television. And for more on Jason Burmis, you can go to facebook.com forward slash Jason Burmis. So, Jason, let's talk about the, I think, probably your biggest film. Let's get your opinion on it. Do you think Loose Chain is your biggest film you've ever made? Yeah, well, obviously. I mean, it's the most downloaded movie of, in the Internet of all time, whether the mainstream media wants to acknowledge that or not. We dominated <laughs> the top that as soon as possible. So that footage right there was Jason Burmis on the satellite network democracy now and he was debating uh was mr megs i forgot his first yeah name. popular mechanics yeah, yeah. It, well, the guy that works for popular mechanics is uh mr megs and he, his former job was working for entertainment weekly as an editor <laughs> and now this guy's uh the expert popular mechanics to debate jason Burmis and the loose change crew so if you look on the like on the video for example on on YouTube the comments are saying oh I don't I don't believe this guy when you have popular mechanics right here and they're the professionals they're the experts but this guy uh, Mr. Megs was working for Entertainment Weekly Entertainment Weekly now he's going to be an expert for uh, building demolition you know he's going to come in there and try to they try to debunk loose change and so has the department the DOD tried to publish an article called Loose Change Debunked. I mean, you guys, Loose Change was monumental to the 9-11 false flag cover-up just to totally blow that thing, the lid off that entire event because conservatively, nearly 8 million views online. I mean, that this video got 4 million views in the first four months. It aired on U.S. European TV stations, and that was the clip from Democracy Now! He was on there debating popular mechanics. I mean, the, even the History Channel had a show which featured the, the uh, producers of Loose Change. So this film was huge. Loose Change was really huge. Like, even now, people still talk about it to this day when we're out handing out DVDs. People are like, oh, yeah, is this Loose Change? I've seen Loose Change. Yeah, because, I mean, it was, I think it's the number one film for 9-11 Truth that really got it out there to the forefront. And Jason was saying, you know, back in the day, it was early. When this when this film was released, it was still early in the movement. Not many people really believe it. How, what is the, do you know the 
percentages of people that actually think that the official story is well, yeah, eleven. There's a CNN uh, dot com uh, poll where eighty four percent of New York New Yorkers believe that nine eleven was a cover up. Yeah, I mean, just showing you that it's it's not some fringe group of people that are that are lunatics that think nine eleven that we're just. Basically, what we're trying to say is we don't know the truth about 9-11. There's a lot of things that the government tried to cover up, but the government did not want to talk about when it comes to this false flag event on 9-11. Oh, yeah, and, and there are also uh, other polls that show the majority of the public do believe there was a cover-up, despite what uh, regular people might say, you know, everyday people who have never looked into 9-11. There are the polls out there to support it. One of them is uh, the CNN poll. Um, there's a, a Prison Planet article that actually has... Uh, Links to a ton of different polls with the public opinions regarding 9-11. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really surprising. And we're seeing the mainstream media, and it's becoming much more of a mainstream topic to talk about with everybody. Everybody's starting to, you know, throw up little questions about it, or at least, like, start to entertain the idea that possibly what they know isn't fully the truth. So, I mean, it's crazy. we got to keep pushing on all fronts, though, because even though loose change is out there and even though there's activists on the streets, we got to push even harder because this is, I, th I think, is the most important thing that needs to be revealed. Because once 9-11 is revealed, the entire framework of this tyranny crumbles because everything that has enslaved this country since is because of 9-11. This police state is because of 9-11. So, I mean, we got to do something about it. we got to get out there and, and really show our voices. So do we yeah, I absolutely, I absolutely agree, guys. I mean, the bottom line is that we need to get out there and tell people that this is not Muslim terrorists. I mean, the boogeyman's not real, folks. Bin Laden, uh, he's out on the lam for almost a decade now uh, with kidney dialysis and his CIA ties. Give me a break. Two months and before, two months before nine eleven, what was he in a, in a hospital, right? Uh, well, the mainstream media reported that he was in, and this is the French mainstream media, Le Figaro reported that he was in a CIA base in Dubai. Yeah. And he's receiving kidney dialysis there, and there's really uh, been no challenge to the fact that he was receiving some kind of hospital treatment. Uh, there's news clips out there where you see that uh, bin Laden was in Pakistan the night before 9-11, uh, at a hospital, people came forward, this was on Dan Rather on CBS News, and said, yes, they treated him for kidney dialysis then, and he was surrounded by the Pakistani military. So we know that the Pakistani military, a.k.a. the ISI, was funding the hijackers, that they're an intricate part of this really Eurasian spy unit for the Anglo-American Empire that's been basically groomed by the CIA. How much more evidence... Do we need? But as you were saying, you know, 9-11 is the basis for all, all of the foreign and domestic policy we see today. And it is the reason for the ever encroaching police state and the never ending wars in the Middle East. And that's why it needs to be exposed. And you know, while you're talking on that, Jason, on this geopolitical aspect of it all and the school of thoughts that, that run the geopolitical process, uh, you go into that more in Invisible Empire and expose the roundtable groups, which also fit in with what you were just speaking about with the International Intelligence Agency. So would you like to bridge that connection? Well, absolutely. With uh, Invisible Empire, the first thing that I wanted to do was kind of dispel this term, New World Order, that everybody had their own spooky conspiracy theory associated with, and show people that this is something that has been trumpeted by the heads of industry of politics, of foreign affairs, of corporate affairs. And they've been talking about this for hundreds, if not thousands of years, and then go on to highlight some of the big players that not only wrote about it, but tried to achieve it. You know, we're not only going to show you Samuel Zane Batten and H.G. Wells showing their and writing about their vision of a new world order. We're going to show you Hitler's vision of a new world order. And sometimes I read the comments from the pro-Hitler crowd over at the uh, Invisible Empire on Change the Channel. And they always try to say that Mein Kampf doesn't mean new order or new world order. We're not talking about Mein Kampf. Mein Kampf, of course, is my struggle, or it can be interpreted as other ways. But he wrote a follow-up book called My Order or New World Order, dubbed mm -hmm. by historians. He openly talked about it. I wanted to put in a video of, uh, that was made by Disney where Donald Duck is having a dream about being in the Nazis.